48 volts. Bingo. Just have to try and charge it now. Right, well I've got battery view running and uh, it seems to say that all the cells are normal. They're all good. Um, the maximum cell voltage is 3.293 and the minimum was 3.235. So they're fairly close, but a little bit. Some of them are a little bit out with each other, but that will probably do okay when I charge it. Um, but at the moment, it says the capacity is zero, but that's because I think it's been off for so long. It needs to have a full charge and discharge so that it can tell how much uh, capacity is available now. So uh, that's the next step: charge it up. Okay. I've had it charging for a large part of today and um, I'm checking it with battery view and it had an over voltage error on one of the cells which I immediately thought would be the new one I just added but it turns out that it isn't um, it's one of the other cells you can see there that the max cell voltage is 3.585 well it was 3.6 a little while ago which is over voltage but compared to all the other cells, which are all about, what, 3.3, 3, uh, to have one that's at 3.6 is not too good. But also it says here cell 9 is at 3.46 and cell 10 is 3.58. So there's two cells in one of these pa uh, boxes that's... Uh, and not behaving right so it might be that all this has been for nothing and that uh, uh, several of the other cell pouches are on their way out now so um, it might have all been a waste of time but I'll I'll have a keep playing around with it and see but at least uh, the new one is not the one that's causing the problem so I'm just using my balance charger to um, try and pull them all down to the same voltage about three point three volts I think that's that 3.33 uh, and it's doing a pretty good job considering um, so as soon as they're all down to the same voltage I'll reconnect up the pack and then and then continue to try and charge it again and see if I can get it all the way up to its top voltage right so that's got them all pretty much balanced again now so I'm going to reconnect it all back up and uh, plug this battery back in and uh, Try and get it to charge all the way up to the top now and see what happens. Now, as soon as I've charged the, uh, put the battery back on to charge again, almost immediately uh, these cells have jumped up really high voltage. So um, this cell, cell 12, is the one that I added, the prismatic cell, which is fine. You see, it's the same sort of voltage as all the others. Um, but these three are the three pouches that were left after the bad pouch was removed. Right, so after a bit of thinking about it, um, I suddenly realized that the, the, the individual blocks probably weren't all at the same voltage to start with. I did put them all sort of around the middle of the, of the voltage range, but because of the way lithium ion phosphate batteries um, voltage curve is, is very flat uh, as they discharge in the middle, I think there's quite a variance between the different blocks in terms of where they were at in their state of charge. So the only way to be absolutely certain uh, that everything is right is to charge them all up to their top voltage and then put the pack back together then. Um, and then that way um, I know for a fact that they're all exactly the same uh, state of charge and the same um, voltage. Uh, and that means that when I put the pack back together it'll be uh, at 100% state of charge so then I'll just have to discharge it and I can keep an eye on the voltages as it discharges and see if they stay in step. Right, I fully charged the battery um, 
haul the modules separately and then put the battery back together so it was in a state of full charge and then I've connected it up with the rest of my other batteries that were also at 100% um, and uh, I'll keep an eye on it now as it starts to discharge this evening and we'll see how well it stays stays balanced. At the moment it's not too bad. Um, the max and min cells are a little bit different but um, it, it's the BMS is quite happy so um, I'll keep an eye on it and we'll see how well uh, it behaves as it starts to get to the point where it's you know like 50% depleted or whatever and see how well balanced it is then if it starts complaining that some of the cells are going under voltage then it just means that uh, this is not going to work so um, let's uh, let's see what happens I'll check back in with it later okay it's been running for most of the evening now but it's only uh, discharged probably to about 80% um, but so far so good, all the cells seem to be staying uh, fairly together. Um, there is a little bit of a spread but nothing too serious at the moment. Um, the capacity will change once uh, it has a, a full discharge and a full recharge, then it will show the true capacity. But um, at the moment it seems to be working okay. Okay, it's the next morning. Um, batteries discharged down to about 50%, I think, um, or thereabouts. It's charging again now, so uh, no errors or anything. Um, the spread of voltages seems to be um, holding fairly steady, um, and the capacity has gone up a little bit, uh, which is what I'd expect as it as it recharges. Now it should be able to gauge roughly how much. So by the time it gets to 100% again, I would hope that capacity reads something around 25, because that would be half of the 50 amp hours that it should have. Um, so yeah, so far so good. I'll keep an eye on it and um, I'll report back later. Okay, so the battery discharged down to about 42% last night. Uh, it's now starting to charge up again this morning, but it's still all okay but um, the gap between the maximum cell voltage and the minimum cell voltage is increasing, uh, I've noticed a little bit, and the, the, the cell with the highest voltage is um, the new one, which is this one, cell 12. Uh, I'll have to keep a close eye on it. For now, it's okay. Right, the batteries are at 100%. It's been about a week now, I suppose, and uh, it still seems to be working fine. Uh, it doesn't seem to be getting too out of step with the others. Um, it is changing slightly, but um, uh, it seems to it seems to sort of get closer again as it gets to the top voltage, probably because the balance is doing its job. So uh, I'll keep an eye on it a bit longer uh, before I seal it up for good, but. Um, uh, in the meantime, I think I might um, add an extra an extra cable um, or an extra two cables to that battery to make sure that it's um, you know sufficient wire there for the um, for the amount of current it's got to do. Okay, like I said, I was going to. I've soldered on another two wires, so I've got four wires on each side now, uh, and I've used a. A lug with a right angle in it so that I can you know it'll sort of fit onto the battery better in this position so yeah four on each side um, it should be fine I, I watched the um, the two cables you know even when it was charging at like 20 amps um, I watched it with a the thermal camera and they didn't really get very hot at all but I'm putting four in there just to be on the safe side but that should be absolutely ample um, so even at 20 amps, that's only like 5 amps per cable, and that's nothing for a cable like this. That's easily capable of 5 amps. So um, that should be no problem. So uh, yeah, that's done. I'm just going to put a bit of heat shrink on, on the end of these lugs, uh, and then uh, I'm going to go and put it all back together uh, and, uh, and finally be able to put the lid on the top. Now I did also say I was going to put some tape around these to keep pressure on them. Um, I thought about using normal sticky tape, 
but I feel like that's maybe not going to have enough give in it because they do need you know a little bit of space to expand, but not not much. So I was thinking I might wrap several thingies of electrical tape around it because it's just a little bit more stretchy. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I think I think a bit of electrical tape around the middle will be enough to. Um, to keep some pressure on it but not uh, so much that it physically can't expand which I think n normal tape, it depends how many times I go around it I suppose but um, yeah I think I'll try that right that's both of those done so I've gone around it about three times so hopefully that will provide enough support and now i also got this foam that I bought and we'll stick that in here to make a nice soft base might just have to cut it to size and make sure there's no sharp edges on the this will protect the batteries from any kind of sharp bits so I might just have to cut cut that off there uh, and then I've got another sheet to go on the top All right right there we go so that's just on the bottom there so it's got a bit of thin foam there to protect it and uh, put this little extra bit just on the side here just to keep it away from these things but it's not going to get to those anyway because you've got these two pieces sticking out but just just a bit of extra precaution really so now we've just got to plonk these bits back in okay that's that one and now the other one There we go. Now, if there's enough space, I could try and get that metal bracket in between these two, but I don't think there'll be enough space because these wires come between the two, so I think that would be a bit too much, too tight, so I don't think I'll be able to get that metal piece back in there. But I'll have a look with two hands. Right, that's it back in. All tightened up. I put this foam block around it again. That should stop that moving around. And I've got two big foam blocks at the back here again to keep it all stable. Once I put this metal bracket back in on the back here, that will press down on those blocks as well. So there's no way that any of this can move. And then on top of that, I'm going to put this sheet of um, foam so that there's no way that this can touch the metal top of the case. Um, and uh, and then hopefully uh, that should be um, as good as you can do. So I'll put that all back together and put the lid on and then uh, hopefully we can test it out. Right, that's the lid back on. So let's just check that it still works. Yep, good. Right, um, Let's put it back in service again. I'll still have to keep an eye on it, mind. There we go, so I've got it back in there for now. Uh, like I say, I need to still keep an eye on it. It's not definitely gonna hold out long term. Um, the, the voltages might drift, but for now, uh, it seems to be okay. So uh, 50 pounds and I managed to get it back in service. So uh, that's pretty good. Right. I'm doing one last uh, connection with battery view just to check that everything's okay there's no alarms um, the voltages you can see the difference between the lowest and the highest is uh, what's that about points point naught seven which is quite quite a bit and that's that gap started off at about point naught five I think or point naught four and it's grown to 0.07 and this is what I was worried about but I'll keep an eye on it um, and I think it's um, the new cell which is this one I think uh, which is the one that has the lowest voltage um, so the problem is you see if this one's voltage is a bit lower all the others have to be a bit higher to make the overall battery voltage need to be uh, what it needs to be to, to be the top voltage uh, and if these all go too high, 
then these will all go over voltage and that will cause a problem uh, and the cells will puff up and uh, that will be it, the battery will die. So uh, I need to keep an eye on this. If this gets too far out of sync with the others, if this gap gets too big, uh, that could cause a problem and uh, I'll have to try and figure out something to do about that or it may be that there's nothing I could do about that. But for now, it seems to be holding, um, so I'll monitor it daily uh, and uh, we'll just see where we go from there. Well, that's it for the video. Um, I'm pretty pleased with the result. You know, I've got it working, um, and that's, uh, you know, an extra two and a bit kilowatt hours of storage back in use again for the sake of £50. Pounds. Um, it's a, a reasonable price to pay, I think, to, to get it working again. Will it work long term? That's yet to be seen. For the moment, the um, max and min voltages uh, of the cells in the pack is slowly drifting apart. Um, I think when I started it was around 0 0.03 thereabouts when it was when it was all top voltages um, and since then uh, they've drifted apart. Um, if that continues that will cause a problem um, but like I say I'm going to monitor it daily um, and uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll report back uh, in a number of weeks uh, at, at how it's going and, and whether or not it is uh, is going to work as a long term fix or or whether it's just been uh, all for nothing but uh, we'll see um, yeah I'm, I'm still keeping an eye out for uh, any spares or repairs um, extra 2000s that I find on eBay but um, they're almost never to be found it was literally just a uh, a bunch of, I think it was eight, eight um, not working extra extra two thousands from some place down in Devon uh, on eBay. Uh, when I last looked at it, it was about three hundred and sixty pounds was the bid, uh, which is not bad for eight units. But you've no idea what's wrong with them. All they said was some of them don't power on at all. Some of them power on and go straight to error. Um, so it could be any number of things, and it's possible I could have made, you know, not only fixed this one uh, with a pouch from it, and maybe maybe made two other good ones out of all those bad ones. But the trouble is, you just don't know. And and uh, I suspect the final closing price was probably uh, closer to four hundred, or maybe even for that, because there's always a flurry of bidding at the last minute, isn't there? Um, uh, and once you start getting into those sort of numbers, where you just, you know, you think I could buy. Um, a fairly new uh, US 2000 um, which is a much newer battery uh, for that kind of money so you know it just doesn't make it just doesn't make sense really to uh, to throw good money after bad in, in a way to try and get to try and get this cell back up and running again by by or forking out almost as much money as you you could just buy a new whole battery with so this is a good solution it was just fifty pounds, and and if it works, great. And if it doesn't, well, you know, no, no real, no real harm done. Let me know what you thought of the video. Um, uh, I'd be interested to hear what uh, your thoughts are on on um, trying to fix these batteries, and whether or not you think it's worth it. Um, but uh, that's all for this video. So, thanks very much for watching, um, and I'll see you all on the next one. Cheers.